it will blow up the Democrats too. I predict if they steal it from Trump, nakedly, that it will be the end of the establishment because they have just 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 really pulled their pants down and 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 mooned the public. Am I right, Roger Stone of StoneZone.com? Well, uh, Alex, I think it remains to be seen. Uh, first of all, all of this uh, talk about steak, I'm ready for a thick old porterhouse right about now. <laughs> uh, uh, it was a beautiful uh, day on the beaches in Florida this week, and uh, and I heard from many of my allies by, by cell phone. Uh, make no mistake about it, the big steal is on. Uh, it doesn't begin in Cleveland, it's already begun. Uh, and uh, as we have revealed here on Infowars.com, in the past, it has two elements. One is to try to stall Donald Trump short of the 1237 that he needs to be nominated, an absolute majority. Uh, and the keystone to doing that, of course, is in the contests that lie ahead. Now, Ted Cruz would need to win 87% of the delegates available of those uh, still unchosen, a mathematical impossibility. Trump has uh, a more realistic 527 that he needs uh, and he is leading big in states like California, New Jersey, New York, and Pennsylvania. Where the establishment and the kingmakers have found what they think is the weak link is Wisconsin. So now what you're going to see is a Paul Ryan, S Scott Walker, Jeb Bush, uh, Mitt Romney, all out assault on Trump in Wisconsin. Now, ironically, if you're doing a vote count, Trump does not have to win Wisconsin. He still has additional places to gain, but Wisconsin is must win for Ted Cruz to remain viable. Uh, make no mistake about where the bosses are. They may be potentially and temporarily wedded to Ted Cruz, but at the end of the day, this convention will either be uh, Ted Cruz, on, pardon me, Donald Trump on the first ballot or Paul Ryan on the fourth. The establishment, basically, can, they can get that opening, they will move to an open convention. If they can't stall Trump short, if he has the 1237, then beware the Trojan horse delegates that we've discussed, those who are pledged to vote for Trump on the first ballot, but will desert him on, on the second ballot, but more importantly, will vote for rules and delegate seating that are harmful to Trump. That's the big steal. Right now, the bosses are packing the crucial rules and credentials committee, not with Trump people, but with hacks, with stooges, with people who are who will follow orders in the big steal. Uh, and it's what's amazing to me, Alex, is that the plotters plot in open. In the circus recently, uh, recently the, the very hot uh, uh, Net-based series. You have uh, Ed Goaz, pollster for the establishment. Ed Rogers, fat cat lobbyist. Ron Kaufman, fat cat lobbyist. Republican National Committee man from Massachusetts. Rick Holt, lobbyist, talking about how Trump will be stopped, talking about why he must be stopped, denigrating Trump. Uh, the, the plotters plot in the open. They plot in the open. Uh, and, uh, uh, you know, all bets are off. The big steal is going forward. The article is on Infowars.com. I want it pegged to the top of our Facebook, Twitter. I want the listeners to get this out to everybody because you may have heard eight months ago all this from Roger Stone. Now it's happening. You heard about the Koch brothers' secret meetings months before they admitted it. They denied it. Now they admit it. You're now, you heard about Jeb before it happened. Now Walker will endorse Cruz and Wisconsin push. The big steal is on. This needs to get out to talk show hosts all across the country. It needs to get out to your friends and family to really see what's happening. We'll play the clip after the break. It's short. But when he, you know, supposedly won Utah, when he went, I've got Jeb Bush. I've got, he is so proud of that now. And people say, well, that's like an albatross around his neck. Jeb Bush was like pulling one or two percent the whole time. Everybody hates him. He doesn't care. He knows there's a big steal. He now wants to supine, grovel, prostrate himself to the Bushes and the Republican establishment so that they will crown him and not put in somebody in front of him. I mean, this is the most disgusting thing where he is now electioneering to the blue blood rhino neocon skeleton. This is insane. Well, Alex, but let's be candid. Those are Ted Cruz's roots. 
Ted Cruz was George W. Bush's issues man the year he ran for no, president. No, I agree, but now it's all confirmed. Now it's all confirmed. So, so their dislike of Ted is personal. It's because he's prickly. It doesn't have to do with the fact that he doesn't support their their uh, their worldview or didn't mastermind the Bush v. Gore legal strategy to steal the election. Ted Cruz did that. I know. I was part of that recount team. He is the legal genius behind the the grab of that election. So uh, he is a, a Bush by by uh, lineage. He is a Bush retainer uh, by history. Uh, his wife is a member on the Council on Foreign Relations. Uh, they're not happy because they don't like him personally. Bush, Cruz, Ryan, uh, uh, Walker, they're all globalists. Rubio, uh, they're all globalists. Let me ask you this. I know you're focused on stopping the big steal. On Wednesday, you'll talk about some plans to do that and some big news you've been working on. But specifically, though, I get they're arrogant. I get they want to hand it to Hillary. I understand all that. But... Doesn't the establishment get that this isn't, that people are really going to get even more angry? And this isn't going to go away? I mean, if they're going to openly appoint presidents now, I, I mean, they really are going to do this because they're on the news selling it on every channel like it's no big deal. You know, what's very amazing to me is that Bill Crystal and the neocons, who are members of the plotters, active members of the plotters, uh, and I, look, I like Bill Crystal on a personal level. I I recognize he was a big supporter of Hubert Humphrey in 1968, and that he comes from a liberal Democrat background. But I, I like Bill Crystal. On the other hand, Crystal started this never Trump hashtag, which uh, the Republican establishment has picked up. Interestingly, now, Trump partisans have begun, we will walk, hashtag, we will walk. They've established a Facebook page, and they have signed up more people than the neocon front put forward by Crystal. People need to realize that the kingmakers will ruin the possibility that Pat Buchanan has spoken about, a new populist-based Republican Party, returning the party to its mainstream roots, not its Wall Street Well, roots. even mainstream media admits there's a Tea Party battle through Trump to take the Republican Party, but they act like it's a horrible thing. Let's keep it in the hands of the Blue Bloods. Wow, this is really uh, over the top. I think this is going to completely pull back the curtain. Well, and here, Alex, is one more bombshell. Very uh, well-connected sources tell me that George Soros is now funneling money to people around John Kasich in order to keep Kasich in the race. Why? Because Kasich could be a vice presidential candidate here. If Trump falls short, Kasich is sitting on 66 delegates. Uh, uh, that would be an abhorrent choice to me for me personally. Uh, but, but perhaps Soros believes the kind of pressure that was put on Trump to take Bush could be put on Trump to take Kasich. Therefore, he is keeping Kasich in the race. This is much to the consternation of the other globalists. Uh, this is making it harder for their hand-chosen boy. But as I've told you many times, in the Bilderbergers, in the Council on Foreign Relations, in the Trilateral Commission, among the elites, they have their own internal power struggles. Soros wants to be dominant. Uh, and I believe that he is keeping Kasich in this race. Wow, so that's, uh, you've always got more bombshells. Uh, obviously, Trump now is talking about them trying to steal it from him, thank God. Uh, now he's forcing that issue, and the media has to sit there with a straight face and go, can you believe Trump saying it's terrible that the Republicans say they may steal the nomination from the voters? I mean, how dare him? He said something even more incredible. Uh, I mean, it, it, it's absolutely blowing up in their face from what I'm seeing in the public. Because when you first said they might do this or we're going to do this eight months ago, people kind of rolled their eyes. Then three or four months ago, people were concerned. Now that they're openly saying it, people aren't buying it. They're like going, what? I mean, uh, wow. But Alex, they're not just saying it. They're doing it. Let's look at what's transpired here. In You're Texas, saying the steal is actually happening now. In Texas, where Donald Trump is entitled to 40 votes, the bodies in those chairs will be stooges for the Rick Perry George P. Bush. Look at, look at Louisiana, where they said that uh, Trump won, but Cruz got the delegates? Yes, they gave they gave Cruz five uncommitted delegates, unbound delegates, uh, and they grabbed five delegates. Now, even though Trump won by almost 5% in Louisiana. And no uh, one's talking about Louisiana stolen from Trump. Going I mean, on in South Carolina. Louisiana voters had their election stolen, and it wasn't even a headline. They were just, Ted Cruz gets it. Oh, sorry, he lost, but he wins. It's like Hillary, New Hampshire. So, so let's go through where, where the other steals are going on, because I've never seen such naked stealing. Go ahead. 
Well, Texas, I think, is the most egregious. Uh, Carl Tepper, uh, the chairman of Lubbock County, very respected chairman of the Republican County Chairman's uh, Association, has essentially been stiff. He's been told directly, sorry, there will be no Trump people on this delegation. Why is that significant? Well, those 40 votes that must vote for Trump on the first ballot, those people will be able to vote against Trump on rules and procedural matters. Incredible. That's where the big steal will take place. That's where they where they stuck it to Ron Paul. That's where Ben Ginsburg and the same kingmakers, Ginsburg being uh, the shrewdest, probably cleverest and most devious of the inside lawyers who know these rules inside and out. That is where the creativity and the railroad will happen. And then that decision must be ratified by the full convention. Sure, but uh, you think they're bold enough. I mean, I mean, really they, listen, they you're right. You're right. The steal is happening. It's ongoing. They're already doing it. That's the news. The steal has already begun. But are they jumping the shark? I mean, how do they think they're going to actually do this for the first time ever in front of everyone and just say, we make the rules when they always hold out your popular vote matters and they honor it? This is unprecedented. Well, I think what's happening here is the, uh, the establishment is greatly underestimating, once again, Donald Trump. They assume that he uh, will not understand these complex rules and the and the arcane system uh, of uh, of uh, uh, winning these delegates and counting these delegates. This is really about vote counting and accurate vote counting more than anything else. Uh, and we're going to see whether Trump is able to uh, go from a winning primary campaign where he has run the table, uh, but with a very anti-party strategy. I mean, recognize the people who are storming the gates are not party regulars. In Texas, the delegates must be chosen from among the people who were delegates to the last state convention. Nobody else is eligible. So some new Trump person new to the process has zero chance. They're stealing in South Carolina. They're stealing in Louisiana. They're going to steal in Colorado. They're going to steal in Arizona. And they're going to steal in North Dakota. Look for those next at all levels. The, the establishment is out to chisel votes here and there from Donald Trump around the edges, but then putting all their eggs in the Wisconsin basket. In the end, California will be as important to Donald Trump as it was in the nomination of Barry Goldwater in 1964. California is the big enchilada. California is where Donald Trump will ultimately wrap it up. I'm highly confident that Chris Christie will deliver a solid delegation to Donald Trump from New Jersey. New York is in fine hands uh, with the activist uh, Tea Party uh, 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 wild man and my friend Carl Palladino, uh, the best uh, grassroots organizer by far in New York State. Uh, so I'm confident about every place, but I'm telling you the showdown is in the Badger State. Paul Ryan, plus the Cokes, plus, plus Walker, $25 million at least in outside money from the Cruz campaign. Cruise packs, anti-Trump packs. We're talking about mail, phone calls, internet ads, cable ads, radio ads, broadcast TV. It hasn't worked anyplace else, but the establishment is going to try it one more time. Well, you know, too, the talking point is Hillary beats him, Hillary beats him, droning, 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 droning. They never <laughs> shut up. And I think it's backfiring. But I tell you, you've been in this a lot longer than I have. I've never historically seen anything this naked except in communist countries that claim they have elections. I mean, this is, this, I think, if they steal it, well, that's another question. Trump started to say people are going to get mad, then they say he's calling for riots. Black Lives Matter run by Soros and others say they're coming to riot. Uh, this is going to get very, very explosive. Yeah, I mean, look, I am totally untroubled by polls that show Trump slightly behind Hillary. In all honesty, that's because Bernie Sanders has not hit her where she was vulnerable. He has never mentioned her epic abuse of women and the fact she was an accessory after the fact in every one of her husbands. He's never brought out her sealed whitewater uh, indictment. I mean, he's never brought up the, the, the whitewater stuff, the, the, the billions from foreigners. I mean, she is so easy. What's the word on indictment? Because they say they're getting pretty close to indicting her. You think that's a baloney? Uh, I, I'm just telling you the stone prediction on this. Uh, the FBI director will recommend her indictment. And Obama will pardon her before the, before the Justice Department can act. And then we'll have a pardoned president? That'll be a first if she well, wins. Well, here's, here's what we don't know. Does he pardon her in return for taking a dive and Uncle Joe Biden, who's been warming up in the bullpen, jumps in? Or do they actually think she can limp through an election with this around her neck? 
uh, recognizing the president would have giant leverage because she's not going to want to go to trial because that's heading to a, an orange jumpsuit, and it's about time. So I still predict that he leverages a pardon, but where the Democrats go from there, I don't think we know. Well, that's what the smart money's saying. They say there's a war of blackmail going on, but they're done with Hillary, and they know that the FBI will be totally discredited if they don't indict. They've now announced they're going to interview her. They got over 100 agents on her. I mean, they wouldn't be doing that if they weren't getting ready to bring her down. I mean, it's so obvious she did something a thousand times worse than Petraeus. Uh, they knew people were accessing her BlackBerry. They knew they were listening to the audio. This woman is insane. Her arrogance, her arrogance only eclipses her evil. Well, and it doesn't require criminal intent. Criminal negligence alone is an easy case. There's, a, there's an overwhelming abundance of evidence. This is not a close case. Uh, she has abused federal documents. But the real question here is, does she have some kind of a Mexican standoff with Barack Obama? Because Hillary, I think, is able to illuminate us on the role of Valerie Jarrett in Benghazi, something I suspect the president wouldn't like too much focus on. And therefore, they may have a, a deal in which she can broker a pardon and still try to get over the finish line because of the demographic changes in the, in the country. She's not pursuing the old Clinton strategy of trying to fool white moderates in the South and the West and trying to put together the old working class Democratic coalition. She and Sidney Blumenthal have a far left strategy. It's the Obama strategy, minorities plus the far left uh, and uh, liberals, uh, and you eke out a majority. That's their strategy. And that's why they've gone thermonuclear with the race baiting and everything. You can really see the future with these guys is a really scary country. It looks like they're going to try to go full authoritarian with a socialist slash communist model. This could be really one of the last real elections. I think that's why you see them getting ready to steal it on both fronts because the gloves are coming off. I mean, wow. Did you ever think you'd see stuff like this in politics as crazy as it was when you were working? Yeah, I, no, look, I must tell you, I have worked on numerous recounts uh, and I have seen very close uh, and competitive primaries. But I must tell you, I've never seen anything like the level of complaints that we are getting from Utah in connection with voting irregularities and voting fraud. Stay there. Do 10 more uh, minutes with us. Roger Stone, stonezone.com out there in the beautiful Florida weather. If you're watching us on TV, infowars.com forward slash show and some stations around the country. For radio listeners, everybody else, we'll be right back in three minutes with Roger Stone, stonezone.com. I'm Alex Jones. We're going back to Roger Stone here in just a moment. He's with us for another 10 minutes. I want to play this clip, uh, his victory speech. Uh, in Utah, which Stone's about to get into, where he magically wins massive reports of fraud. And we've seen him in Louisiana get 10 delegates. Just They just took them. And it was just in the front of the paper. Louisiana, Cruz loses, but it goes to him. And they don't say it's a fraud. They just go, like the head of the rules committee for the, for the election... He got up on CNBC and he went, oh, no, people think there's a popular vote. The media keeps saying it. The party makes the decision. She goes, well, then why have the primary votes? He goes, that's a good point. We should just get rid of it. So they have to normalize, I guess, like kidnapping your wife and raping her or something. I mean, you're supposed to pledge as delegates, go and do it. That's what you're supposed to do. They changed the rules in the 70s to be able to steal it. But so what you chose, stole the rules. These are elections, these are public elections. There's money involved running the elections. Private groups honorarily control it because of the party that predates it. But you're grandfathered in to honor it, not to openly steal it. It's amazing. And, and, and that's the view, that's the view of common law, it's history, but these lawyers wanna tell you they're allowed to do it. Well, next they'll tell you that your kids belong to them like Melissa Harris Perry does. I want to play this clip of Ted Cruz where he endorses the establishment endorsing him. It is truly sycophantic. What we are seeing happening all across this country is Republicans are uniting behind our campaign. Republicans are coming together and uniting behind our campaign. In the last 10 days, our campaign has been supported by Jeb Bush. Stop right there. This goes into how great he is and how much he loves the Bushes. 
I got to tell you, Roger, you have been 100% accurate and dead on like no other political analyst we've ever seen. And I know that's because you were an insider and in the last 10 years have turned against it when you realized it was a fraud. But tell us uh, what's going to happen. Well, you were getting into Utah and the steel there, the other steels that are coming up and, and other big tidbits, because I'm going to have an article put out about this that we're going to put out tomorrow with this video, just warning people that, hey, America, will you let them really steal the election? Because... This is like suspending the election. I mean, if you appoint the people and ignore the popular vote, that's the same thing as canceling it. You just have some synthetic facade going, and the public's going to see right through that, Roger. Do you agree? Well, look, yes, I, Alex, I do. Let me clear one thing up. As you probably saw on Friday, uh, Ted Cruz attacked me personally, uh, viciously, claiming that I had planted. Uh, an article in the National Enquirer. Let me be very clear. This article, which is very controversial, I'm quoted on the record. Why would I ever be quoted on the record in an article that's being planted as a dirty trick? Why would anyone do that? I understand the murky ways of the back alleys of American politics. Uh, this story uh, did not come from the Trump camp, did not come from me. It's not a matter I've ever discussed with Donald Trump or his campaign. This story originated with private detectives working for Marco Rubio. Perhaps off the books, but working for Marco Rubio. Rubio uncovered these leads. He held them, I think, against a hedge regarding attacks on his own personal life. In the end, he didn't use this information because he never had to. He never got enough traction that it mattered. I think the PIs went out and sold this information and got a second payday. But to unfairly blame Donald Trump, uh, is a canard. Trump knows nothing about this, as he has said. Uh, and look, I'm the Peck's bad boy of American politics. I've been around. Let's blame Stone. It's raining well, out. Well, by the way, let me just bring this up just to show how the dirty stuff works. He, he gets up to the speech. He goes, Roger Stone, the henchman of Trump, the vicious evil monster who you worked for in the deal in Florida. Roger Stone, the day after these attacks on my wife, the day after it's in the Inquirer, the Inquirer admitted they've been working on it for six months. You learned about it a couple months ago when they called you. You told me about it at dinner, but said, let's not go there because, you know, we're not going into personal stuff. You said, I will go into Rubio and his bubble baths with other guys and whatever, because that's, you know, interesting to the base. So you're out there about the big steal. They want this distraction about you attacking his wife or whatever. The truth is he was moved out for years. His daughters don't even like him. He's down here with all these women. It's well known. I mean, I even know people that have talked about Ted Cruz in Austin, and I just ignored it. Uh, but reportedly, he's quite the Pepe Le Pew. Yeah, I, look, I, I, I really, I abhor this kind of thing. There's enough about Ted Cruz that's troubling to beat him on the issues. He and and uh, including his illegal loans, which he lied about from Wall Street, from Goldman Sachs, and so on. Uh, I like Marco Rubio, and, and I actually had a fear that others would exploit these vicious rumors about him. I really don't have any interest in that. This isn't, uh, this, this is, uh, it's... Well, this, sure, this you never brought any of that up about him, but I mean, I mean, I mean, you just did say that, well, that might be more interesting, but yeah, you were, you were at dinner saying none of this is good to cover. No, because I think there are bigger issues. Look, just in the last couple of weeks, Ted Cruz has named the man as his chief economic advisor, former Senator Phil Graham. This is Dr. Doom. This is the guy who repealed Glass-Steagall. This is the guy who caused the bubble that destroyed our economy. Then he came back for a second, bite at the apple in his other oriented uh, legislation. This guy's already destroyed the, the, uh, the economy once. This is who Ted Cruz would put in charge. This is a Wall Street from Predator. Today, Phil Graham works for UBS and has helped them hide offshore uh, uh, millions from U.S. taxation. So uh, whether it's Neil Bush endorsing and becoming a part of Ted Cruz's finance committee, or whether it is Jeb Bush, uh, who, is, uh, who is now reluctantly supporting a guy he doesn't even like personally, but whose globalist views that he, that he supports. Neil Bush, who defrauded American uh, taxpayers out of $1.5 billion, and now Phil Graham. This is quite a trio. Neocons, the people who have destroyed our economy through NAFTA, and TPP and all other all of their other globalist international trade pacts. Uh, just look at who Donald Trump's opponents are, and you understand you're on the side of the patriot. You're on the side of history. I've got to say this, Roger. I 
about six, eight months ago, started to pretty much say, I think Trump's the guy because of him against globalism and the system attacking. But I was still in my mind hedging, you know, saying, you know, if he does stuff I don't like, I'll come out against him because I'm, I'm a person of integrity. But now watching the entire world arrayed and dictators and mass murderers and the lying and the hype and at colleges, you see the name Trump screaming, crying, psychologist. This is like a mental patient movie. This is like a absurdist art film or something where everyone just runs around screaming and they're murdering pinatas of him and hanging him everywhere and, and going, he's white, he's white. I mean, it, it is just the craziest, bizarro world. Why are they so scared? I know I've asked that question a million times, but they are having a total conniption fit. And so all I care about now is, I hate this establishment. They're frauds. They're funding ISIS. They're bankrupting our country. They're coming after our kids. They've sold our jobs overseas. So I see Trump now like a patriot suicide bomber, uh, blowing them up. And, and, and when they crush him and steal it from him, that's going to be a bigger explosion. It's just going to be delayed. I, I mean, this is actually beautiful to see the hatred of the establishment, the waking up, the people not buying into uh, mainstream BS. And even if they can somehow force the destruction of Trump, I, th I mean, I'm sure this is a death blow to the rhinos and the Democrats and the rest of them. This is amazing. Well, I, I think once again, they have a tremendous t tendency to, admit, to underestimate Trump, but let's recognize the two track program here. These people are ruthless, they're efficient, they have a leg up in the process. We don't have the cozy relationship. Your Skype's breaking up a minute. Just wait a second until it stabilizes. You Roger have the, Stone. the national problem. Roger, stay there for a minute. Your Skype's your Skype's messing up. I want to be able to catch back up and work here. It was working fine, but it's 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 breaking up now. Stonezone.com. Uh, he also has a Stop the Steal website. This is the time to be maximally involved. And listen, even if they still steal it, we win. Because we'll be out there educating everyone, and the, the curtain is back. This is their boldest move. They think they own this country. They think they own the process. They're telling you your vote doesn't count. This is amazing. And you can call 855-245-4634 to report fraud, shoot YouTube videos about it, write articles about it, call talk radio about it, get upset when they rob you. And when, they, and when you vote for Trump and they steal your delegates, if they do, which has already happened in Louisiana and Texas and other areas, go ape. You've been robbed. Go to the election commission. Get upset. It's time to take action. Again, um, stop the steal. We'll put it back up on screen for folks. Uh, what's the full URL for that, Roger Stone? What's the full URL for stop the steal? I think we have a delay. Stopthesteal.org. Stopthesteal.org. Okay. Uh, two minutes, and then I know you got to go. What are other key tidbits for people? What else is going on? Well, I actually think what you've got now is, uh, is uh, the importance of these contests moving forward. Trump has got to make an all-out push uh, in Wisconsin. Uh, I spoke to him over the Easter holiday. I called him to wish him, uh, his, he and his family, uh, a very uh, holy and blessed Chris, uh, Easter. Uh, he got terrific news in the birth of his new grandson, Theodore, I thought it was interesting that he, he uh, evoked Theodore Roosevelt in his discussion uh, with the New York Times as the last time he saw foreign policy agreed with. The entire text of his New York Times interview, which was covered worldwide, shows me that the CFR effort to try to infiltrate Camp Trump and affect his thinking to try to move him to a globalist worldview has utterly failed. What you heard was pure, adulterated Trumpism. Put America first, get our jobs back, reassert our fiscal sanity, balance the budget, cut our debt, rebuild our strength, uh, and, uh, and get a foreign policy which is coherent, a foreign policy in which every question uh, that we face is measured by one, one uh, precept. What's in the best interests of the United States of America? That's Trumpism. And that's why they're so scared, because he's put money for decades into anti-globalist efforts, into the uh, stopping NAFTA and GATT. Uh, that's what he's told people. He goes, I'm sick of this. We can make better deals. Globalism was about selling America's wealth out so the globalists that sold us out could be kingpins in China and India and Mexico. 
They've now taken the country over. They've impoverished us. They've got their l l foot on our neck, and they think we're done, and they're just going to arrogantly waddle in and try to destroy Trump. Shame on all the trendies and the hype-driven morons that go around feeling good because the mainstream media got into such a mentally ill frenzy. If they see a Trump sticker, they start crying and rolling around, and psychologists have to come. And then the dean of the major universities is like, we're very scared. This is a threat. The word Trump is racism. I mean, talk about... The Soviets and the Communist Chinese under Mao at the worst time were not this basket case gibbering mental patients. I've got to be honest, uh, Roger Stone, I'm scared for young people and liberals. I mean, they're not liberals, man. They're in a freakazoid cult. Yeah, it's very, very strange. As you know, one of the precepts of this cult, of course, is that Hillary Clinton is a saint, and that she's an advocate for women. She was a marvelous secretary of state, and she's doing really good charitable work at the Clinton Foundation. Uh, and if you believe any of that, I have a bridge in Brooklyn I want to talk to you about. Wow. All right. Well, Roger, I know you got the even bigger news for us on Wednesday, and you've promised to come and, and also uh, also share another article with us. But again, the articles you sent us, I appreciate as exclusives, but please just send them out. Whoever wants to post them can post them. I don't want to be the only one that you know has these. I know the Daily Caller and also Breitbart carry your stories and want them, and you've, you're giving some to us, so I appreciate that. But this one you send out Wednesday is so big. You know, I hope you just send it to everybody and say, hey, you know, this is this is like a syndicated column. Get this out. Everybody needs to go to Infowars.com uh, and PrisonPlanet.com and get the Walker will endorse Cruz in Wisconsin push. It's an important headline, but uh, I think it should probably be changed to the Republicans are already stealing the nomination from Trump. The big steal has begun. Uh, but uh, Roger, great job. And thank you for your work defending this republic. Uh, certainly, this has got to be an exciting time for not just you, but everybody else, because this is historical. Well, I like the idea of the headline change. And Alex, uh, I look forward to talking to you on Wednesday. All right, sir. Thank you very much, Roger Stone. StoneZone.com. You can find both his new best-selling books at InfoWarsStore.com. We're going to go to break here in just a few minutes. But